Welcome to iLecture Online and now let's take a closer look at inflection points. Remember inflection points are the points where we go from concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down. That's the point where the slope goes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. And the way we find those inflection points is by taking the second derivative, setting it equal to zero and solving for those values of x that satisfy that equation. Now, there are two different kinds of inflection points. One is where the slope of the inflection point is, of the function is equal to zero, and the other one where the slope of the function is not equal to zero. Here I have graphically given you an illustration. In this case, you can see that the slope is positive but decreasing, so this is concave down. We get to this point where now we go from concave down to concave up. So that's what we call an inflection point. And at that particular inflection point, you can see that the slope there is zero the slope of the function there is zero. Here we have a similar function. Here the slope is positive but decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. It's still positive. We get to this point, now the slope begins to increase again. So we go from concave down to concave up. Here's the inflection point that gives you that changeover from concave down to concave up. But at that point the slope is not zero. It's other than zero. I tend to call these kind of inflection points vertical inflection points and these kind of inflection points horizontal inflection points, realizing of course that it is not 100% vertical, most of the time it's at some sort of angle, but it's not zero. So maybe a non-zero inflection point may be a better way to describe it. So to illustrate this a little bit better, here's an example, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. We've put in the coefficients just so that it's easier to work with this particular example. Let's first take the first derivative, f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Now we're going to set that equal to zero to find all the max and mins. But now here's one thing we have to be careful of. Since there is such a thing as an inflection point that has a zero slope, when we plug in a zero for the derivative and solve for x, we may not only be finding max and min or local max and min, we may also be finding inflection points with a zero slope. And we won't be able to tell the difference initially when we solve for the first derivative by setting it second equal to zero. So therefore we need a second derivative to make that clear and we'll show you how to do that. So set f prime of x equal to zero and again we're finding for all the critical points with zero slope both max, min and horizontal inflection points. So 0 equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared. First of all, we can divide both sides by 4. So we have 0 is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared. And then factoring out an x squared, we get 0 equals x squared times x minus 3, which means that x equals 0 or x equals 3. Now what that means is that these could be max, min, or horizontal inflection points, and we won't know for sure until we continue with the problem. So that means x equals 0 may be a max, a min, or inflection point. x equals 3 may be a max, min, or inflection point. So this is a max, a min, or a horizontal inflection point. If we graph that, we get some sort of idea where those points are at. So let's try to do that here. So here's our graph, and maybe to make some more room, let me get rid of this right here, give me some more room. So here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis, and uh, let's plug those points back in the original function. So when x equals 0, y is equal to 0. So f when x equals 0 is equal to 0. So that's the 0, 0 point, which is right here. So that's one of our critical points. We know for sure the slope is 0 there, we just don't know if it's a max, min, or a horizontal inflection point. The second point can be found by plugging x into our function. So f when x is equal to 3 is equal to 3 to the 4th power minus 4 times 3 to the 3rd uh, power. Uh, let's see here, that would be equal to 81 minus 108. 27 times 4, yes. And so that would be equal to minus 27. So when x is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3, y is negative 27. So that's this point right here. And again, that may be a max, a min, or a horizontal inflection point. Again, we don't know yet which one it is. So what we're going to do now is take the second derivative of our function. Okay, second derivative, f double prime of x is equal to 12x 
squared minus 24x to the first power. Now we're going to set that equal to zero. Remember, why are we setting it equal to zero? Because that's how we find the inflection points. So set f double prime of x equal to zero. So zero equals 12x squared minus 24x. Divide both sides by 12, we get zero equals x squared minus 2x. And then factor out an x, zero is equal to x times x minus two, which means x equals zero or x equals two. Now we know for sure that at those two locations for x, and of course finding the corresponding y values, those are inflection points. We know that for sure, inflection points. Now, let me get my red pen out. Come back over here where we set the first derivative equal to zero, we found x equals zero or x equals three, which means that they were either max, min, or horizontal inflection point, but we found the same value for x over here with the second derivative which means this here is not a max or a min. This must be an inflection point because we found the very same value for x when we set the second derivative equal to zero. We found it here again. So that makes it for sure that this is not a max or a min. This is an inflection point. And since, now the corollary is, since we did not find the value x equals three here when we set the second derivative equal to zero, which we found over here, that means that this must be a max or min. It cannot be an inflection point, otherwise we would have also found that value for x over here. And finally, x equals 2 cannot be a max or a min because it is an inflection point. x equals 0 cannot be a max or a min because it is an inflection point. We found those values when we set the second derivative equal to 0. So coming over here, when x equals 0 and y equals 0, that has to be an inflection point. It has to be an inflection point with a horizontal slope, right, with a zero slope, because we find it over here as well. So we know that even though this is an inflection point, it has a zero slope. It's a zero slope inflection point, and that has to be a max or a min. All right, now how do we know if this is a max or a min? There's another beauty of the second derivative. So here we can say, is this a max or a min? Is this max or min. Well, let's take that value for x, which is 3, right? So this point here is 3, 3 comma negative 27. Let's take that value for x and plug it back into the second derivative. So let me get a blue pen out so we don't get too confused here. So evaluate the second derivative, f double prime of x, when x is equal to 3. And let's see what we get. Our second derivative is over here. So let's plug in that value. So we have 12 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3. So that's 9 times 12, that's 108, minus 24 times 3, that's 72. That's 28 plus 8, which is 36. The big thing here is that it's positive, which means our function at this point must be concave up. Concave up means that the, that the slope is increasing. Remember, let's write that down. Concave up means that the slope is increasing, means that it must look like that. It's like a ball, it can hold water. That's one way to think about it. And concave down, where the slope is decreasing, so as you go to the right, the slope is decreasing, so it must look like that, it sheds water. So concave up means that it must be, in this case, a minimum value because the slope, the, fu the function must look like that. If it was concave down, it would look like that and we would put that in its place. So now we know that this function here at this location looks like this, like a bowl because it's concave up. We know that the slope here is negative. So when we connect these two, we know that it goes like this, it goes like this. And then over here, that's an inflection point. It's not a max or a min. It's a horizontal inflection point. So here, since this is concave down, means on the other side it must be concave, concave up. That means it has to be sloped like that. And that's what the function must look like right here. And be careful here, that's just an arrow. So don't get confused. And based upon using the first and second derivative information, we know that this is a horizontal inflection point. This is not an inflection point. 
but when we plug this value into the second derivative, we get a concave up because it's positive, which means that it must be a minimum, and that allows us to figure out what that function looks like graphically. So here we have a good example of the two different kinds of inflection points, one that's horizontal, one that's not, and how we can tell the difference. That's how we do that.